All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. Another day, another chapter in the cost cap saga drama. This time from Zach Brown of McLaren, stating that outright, in his opinion, Red Bull cheated last season, spent way more than their allocated development resources, and therefore should be penalized not just financially, but a far more severe sporting penalty. Very much into your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Nearly at 10,000 subs. So you guys have been doing a great job hitting that red button the last few days. Firstly, on the Haas side, Gene Haas himself, the owner, says the following, Mick has got a lot of potential, that being Mick Schumacher, but you know he costs a fortune and he's wrecked a lot of cars that have cost us a lot of money that we just don't have. That's the thing, Haas kind of, well, look, any Formula One team is not exactly a budget team, but we know that Haas started out the season strong. The budget for development and these resources doesn't really exist and they've fallen off the pace a lot. And yes, Mick Schumacher's had his fair share of shunts. I mean, we saw back in Saudi Arabia, yeah, there was a pretty scary one that he got away with. And um, even, well, Monaco, of course, when he cut the car in half. And then recently, after the checkered flag falls in, in Suzuka, he bins it in the wall as well. But still, out-qualified Kevin Magnussen. So that's the key point here, really, where Mick Schumacher's been performing well lately, but he does cost them a lot of money. And as Gene Haas goes on to say, if you bring us points and you're Verstappen and you wreck cars, we'll deal with it. We don't care. If you're Max Verstappen, you put the odd car in the wall, who really cares? But when you're at the back and you wreck cars, that's that's very difficult, right? So yeah, quote the statement to really, and outright just saying Mick Schumacher probably isn't the guy for them. They want a guy that's not going to wreck cars all the time, which is understandable, but will they choose a driver with less potential to try and, well, preserve the bank account? Maybe that's understandable, but also is it the best decision? Because Nico Hulkenberg apparently is now the guy that's going to get the Haas seat next year. They want to move on from Mick Schumacher. And um, I mean, yeah, look, statements like this are the reason why, whether you think that's fair or not. So if Mick Schumacher is gone and Nico Hulkenberg is in because Haas want less shunts, I suppose, and less car damage, which is understandable, but, you know, obviously people have their opinions on that one. Then where does that leave Mick Schumacher? Some people expect him to join Williams. That was the conversation recently that, okay, if they choose Hulk over Mick, then that's going to be their pairing of Albon and Schumacher next year. However, the possibility is that Logan Sargent is going to be that guy instead. Mark Webber, of course, the mastermind you could argue behind Piastri's move to McLaren, reckons that Logan Sargent is the most likely. He's currently a Formula 2 driver, been making waves, honestly, the last couple of years in the feeder series. And um, yeah, he reckons Sargent is the prime target. I think even the head guy, Capito, over at uh, Williams actually said he will put Sargent in a seat at some point, or he believes Sargent should be in a seat at some point, whether this season or not, who knows. But uh, I think all he has to get is maybe seventh or something in the um, in the point standings in Abu Dhabi in the final Formula 2 race to get enough points in the, in the championship so that he can qualify for the super license to get a Formula 1 seat. So that's kind of the only thing that he has to ensure. And then if he gets that, then it'll be good to compete. Now, honestly, his record the last couple of seasons is kind of impressive. His race pace and race craft might not be quite as good as some of the other drivers in Formula 2, but in terms of qualifying and raw pace, Logan Sargent's right up there. These are his qualifying results the last few years. Even against Piastri back in 2020, he dominated in qualifying. And in 2021, it'd be all of his teammates in quali. And then 2022, this time against Lawson, another great driver, 9-4 in four against him in quali. So definitely has got the pace on an overall one-lap basis. And uh, yeah, maybe that's one of the reasons why Williams are considering his services next season. And if Mick Schumacher doesn't get picked up to the Williams seat, if he gets kicked out of Haas, some people think that when Sauber join forces with Audi and Alfa Romeo find themselves out of a spot in Formula 1, then it's going to be Mick Schumacher to Audi in 2024. So it's not like Mick's going to be out of Formula 1 for long, we think. But of course, uh, like, there are no guarantees, certainly this season. Quick update before we talk cost cam actually from Cota, the race coming up this coming weekend. Mario Andretti, we saw him driving McLaren around Laguna Seca just yesterday. The final corner turn 20 has actually been renamed the Andretti after the 78 world champion, or not 78 time, the 1978 world champion. So um, and yeah, pretty cool stuff. So Thursday there's going to be a ceremony to kind of announce this, I suppose, discussion for the upcoming weekend. I thought that was pretty cool stuff. Now let's talk budget cap. So we saw yesterday Bernie Eccleston said the sanction will be even worse than Red Bull losing the championship last season or Verstappen losing his title because of uh, the budget cap breach. Now, does Bernie Eccleston actually know anything? Does he have any insider knowledge? Or is he just speculating? That's a question we may well ask. But of course, all the teams are maybe entitled to, but also understandably are incentivized to push very hard indeed for some sort of serious punishment for Red Bull, right? Because all the other teams made the cap. Now, yes, Aston Martin and Williams had these procedural breaches where they filled in a form wrong, but every 
every other team reached the number 145 million and Red Bull did not to our understanding. Now Red Bull, as I say, and the FAA are still in discussions day by day to try and figure this one out. And who knows if in a couple of days the FAA are going to come out and say, you know what, Red Bull were right all along and uh, there's actually no cost cap breach. Their accounting was correct. We made the mistake. I mean, that would be drama for the ages, but it's already drama for the ages. So all the teams are going to say, you know what, Red Bull, you've got to clamp down hard the FAA because we made the limit. They didn't make the limit. What's going on there? So Zach Brown from McLaren says the following, effectively saying this, breaking the cap constitutes cheating, accusing Red Bull of cheating pretty much outright, which um, I mean, look, at the end of the day, if you breach the technical regulations, that's considered cheating. The teams are going to think the same thing about the budget cap because it's honestly rather similar in the current state of Formula One with how much importance actual spending has on, well, time in terms of tenth of a second round the track. So even Zach Brown went on to say it is paramount that the cost cap continues to be governed in a highly transparent manner, both in terms of the details of any violations and related penalties. That's the thing. We don't know the number yet. Like uh, it's speculated to be $1.8 million, $2 million ish that Red Bull spent over the cap, but we don't know the precise number from the FIA. All we know is it's a minor infringement according to their rules, but minor goes up to 5% or $7 million ish dollars, which is, well, a lot of people will consider very much major indeed, given uh, for some teams that can be the entire development budget of a car that Zach Brown's going to mention here in just a second. So that's one side of the argument. And I think transparency here should be very important, right? Because in previous instances, the Ferrari engine thing, we never really get to know. They kind of settle privately. And, you know, Hamilton's also pushed hard for Mohammed Ben Suleim to like actually be transparent on this and make the process public. So these are the full words from Zach Brown in a letter that he's written to the FIA, Mohammed Ben Suleim, and also F1's uh, head boss, Stefano Domenicali, right? So like, uh, I don't know if this got leaked or whether this became public, like deliberately or whatever, but this is what he says. We don't feel a financial penalty alone would be a suitable penalty for an overspend breach or a serious procedural breach. There clearly needs to be a sporting penalty in these instances, as determined by the FIA. We suggest that the overspend should be penalized by way of a reduction to the team's cost gap in the year following the ruling, and the penalty should be equal to the overspend plus a further fine, i.e. an overspend of 2 million 2021, which is the rumor, would result in a $4 million deduction in 2023, 2 million to offset the overspends, plus a $2 million fine, which is a kind of his idea. So he doesn't say outright here that they should strip him of the title because, you know, McLaren weren't really in that race. But he does say a sporting penalty. And I honestly thought a sporting penalty would refer to reduction of points in the championship, right? I think that's kind of where the sporting penalties come through. I guess sporting penalty could also relate to the, uh, well, the budget cap for future seasons. But that to me also seems like a bit of a financial penalty. So not quite sure what he's getting at here, whether he's saying they should be docked points or whether he's suggesting that, uh, you know, they should just have their budget reduced for future seasons. But regardless, he's calling them out for cheating and he's saying they should have a sporting penalty. And actually goes on to say this, which we haven't really heard anyone say so far. For context, $2 million is about a 25-50% upgrade to an annual car development budget. So this is the key point. $145 million is the total budget cap. But within that, they um, obviously they have way more costs. They have to pay the staff, they have to pay the run the factory, have to pay for transport and stuff like this. We see Red Bull say that an actual F1 car with all the parts costs about maybe 12 to 15 million to build. So you've got a couple of them plus a reserve one or whatever. Then you've got the development costs for the season, which uh, happened sometimes before the season, obviously mostly before the season. But then I guess teams have a budget to which they will allocate spending for developments within the season. And that may be, as he says, two mil is 25 to 50% of that for certain teams. So I guess he's saying that a lot of teams will have a ballpark figure of five to eight million dollars. And that's their kind of in-season development budget. So if Red Bull were to have spent two million extra on in-season development, that would constitute not just a one or two percent breach, but that's constituting a 25 or a 50 percent breach based on, you know, if they were to just all spend that on development. Now, of course, they're going to say they didn't spend it all on development, which of course is fair enough and they probably didn't. But at the same time, it's impossible to really determine if they went over the budget, what that looks like in terms of where that extra money was spent. So that's the big question here. And even he goes on to say there should be, you know, sporting penalties of a 20% reduction in CFD and wind tunnel time. So like, um, look, he's not really going to call, I suppose, for Verstappen to be docked the championship just because he wasn't really in the fight for the championship. He's more concerned about them getting reductions of, you know, wind tunnel testing time and all this. And I'm sure Mercedes would absolutely agree with this, right? But they probably would want to go one step further. And Ferrari have said, and even Carlos Sainz has said, look, there needs to be maximum penalty for this, inflict maximum hurt on Red Bull and uh, McLaren are like, well, look, dock them the money for future budget caps plus an additional docking from a 
buying perspective, then reduce their wind tunnel time and testing time in the simulators. And uh, look, I think honestly, that's probably what they're more likely to do, whether they go to the like the limits that like uh, Zach Brown has just mentioned here. And as he goes on to say, these should be enforced in the following year to mitigate against the unfair advantage of the team that has and will continue to benefit from. This is one of the other key points that by overspending, they've gained an advantage which has carried into this season and potentially into next season as well. So that's where the real frustrations come from some of the other top teams. They feel like, well, hang on a second here. Red Bull won last year's drivers and won both this year's championships. And yet they're the only team that overspent. Like maybe they would have done so regardless, but you never really know. And the teams, I think, understandably feel aggrieved as a result. And even Zach Brown says this, we have even been given a dress rehearsal in 2020 when this type of stuff was already being kind of considered at least. So the accounting measures were in place at the time before the budget get really came into effect and said, look, they had ample opportunity to seek any clarification if details were unclear. There's no clarification needed in terms of, at least in his opinion, discussions between the FIA and Red Bull on whether this element or this element should count in the rules. They had time to figure it out. If they haven't done, it's their fault. They cheated. They should be penalized. So what do you think of the comment section below? Of course, the fact of the matter is that every team that's not Red Bull is going to be pushing hard for maximum possible punishment. Like uh, if you're not Mercedes, you're probably just pushing for reduction in kind of testing time and this type of stuff. Mercedes, I'm sure, would really like to publicly push for uh, well reduction in championship points, let's say, which is a possibility, but still it doesn't feel overwhelmingly likely. So very much intrigued to your thoughts and all that stuff in the comments section below. We go back to Kota, of course, in just a couple of days' time, but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.